You're watching W33BY, Detroit Highland Park, Michigan. The views and opinions expressed on the following show are not necessarily the views and opinions of W33BY, its affiliates, management, or sponsors. And we join with our co-host, Sister Terry, and she has a beautiful agenda lined up for us today for our, today's programming. I call it programming because we're reprogramming people to the foolishness that they have been programmed with all day, every day on mainstream media. So once again, I want to welcome everybody to the Think Tank Show here on T33WHPR. And also go to YouTube and punch in the Think Tank show, watch some back issue shows that we may have had that you may have missed, maybe your first time watching. So feel free at 6 o'clock to lock in to the, the Think Tank show on YouTube and invite your friends and families to the Think Tank show on Facebook so that you can stay tuned to our programming and who our advertisers are and our sponsors are. Today I'm going to start off with something that I've been pondering for the last couple of days, but before I do, Sister Terry, are you there? Thanks, how are Sister you? Sister Terry, okay, you can hear me? Yep, good to hear you. Good, I'm going to run my mouth for a couple of minutes and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Sister. All right. Programming. We need movies. We need music. We need more TV shows such as this with sustenance. Our movies need to be able to break box office numbers when it's dealing with the re-education and the glorifying of the great history of our ancestors. Our ancestors are the mothers and fathers of civilization. And this is not a conjecture. This is not reverse racism, nor is this somebody or someone trying to change his story. This is an actual fact. This is something that has been taught by Prophet Noble Drew Ali a hundred years ago. It's something that was taught by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad 70 years ago, 85 years ago, that we are the original people of the earth. And now, it's being taught on the History Channel, Discovery Channel, National Geographic Channel. But the language that they use is a slight bit different from the language that we're used to hearing. They use titles like Homo sapien, Homo erectus, Homo hopolilius, Neanderthal. Well, when Prophet Noble Jr. Ali brought it to us, he told us that the Asiatic man, the Mobites, are the original people of the land those dark-hued people. 
these are what they consider to be homo sapiens and the ones who were the first to walk out of Africa and to go sojourn and inhabit it and plenish the earth, the Adam and Eve of your Bible. And we need more movies to depict our people or depict the historical aspect accurately. A lot of times we, re we rely on biblical scripture to be our foundation for actual history, when in fact you will get lost in history when you are founded only on biblical stories or the biblical aspect of life or the Quranic aspect of life. Not to say that the Quranic or the biblical aspect of life is not something that should be adhered to or paid attention to. What I'm telling you is, is that you can't bank your history, our history, strictly on biblical and Quranic writing or scholarship because it doesn't deal with the history of our ancient forefathers and foremothers in its totality. So we need more movies that's going to take us back to ancient civilizations and bring us up to modern day life and who the people are so that they're able to see themselves within the epigraphic record books, in the biblical record books, in the Quranic record books. When they're not able to see themselves, they don't have that sense of self-worth or sense of self-love. And this is one of the reasons why we have what we have going on in places like Baltimore, Maryland, and St. Louis, Missouri, and uh, Ferguson, Missouri, et cetera. And that's because the Asiatics or the so-called black people of the United States of America don't have that sense of self-worth or self-pride or, or love for themselves. And there's nothing wrong with promoting self-love. There's nothing wrong with fixing your house first making sure that your household is in order before you can step out on the community or step out on the block and try to help somebody else out with their household. You must cut your grass first before you can cut your neighbor's grass. So there's nothing wrong with us as a people wanting to have self-love and taking care of our house first before we can get out and we can integrate as far as doing business with other people nationally and internationally. So one of the things that we need to revert back to is history. And the history that I'm talking about is the history of our great brothers and sisters that came right here in the United States of America. And I dare to say that one of the most left out persons or uh, spirit that came here in the United States of America that is not in your history books or our history books in the uh the public school system in the United States of America is Prophet Noble Jurali. And why? And it's, it's because, and Marcus Moselle Garvey, and why? And it's because of what they promoted. Marcus Moselle Garvey, according to the teachers of the Moore Science Temple of America, is the forerunner, or was the forerunner of our holding divine Noble Jurali, who looked like us, who came from us, who was raised amongst us. We're talking about Prophet Noble Jurali. And Marcus Garvey was the forerunner of Prophet Noble Drew Ali. So what made this so? What makes that important is what Marcus Garvey taught. He taught back to Africa. He taught do for self. He taught for us to make sure that our dollars circulate within our communities anywhere from six to ten times before we leave out of our community to do business with anybody else. These are things that's pertinent for us to draw from or to link up to as a people in order for us to survive. But these are the things that's missing within the paradigm of our people here in the United States of, in the United States of America. And this is the reason why we're run amok. This is the reason why so many of our brothers and sisters are being killed. We have a brother who recently was murdered by Colonial Occupation Control, acronym for COPS, in Baltimore, North Baltimore, or no, North uh St. Louis, Missouri, some weeks ago, a brother named Bob Bay, who was a Moorish American Muslim. And the theme now is Black Lives Matter. Well, I understand all of that. I get it. I understand the spirit in which our brothers and sisters are crying. And I agree, your life matters. Those of you who uh, refer to yourself as being black or whatever you are calling yourself at this particular hour. Yes, our lives definitely matter. 
And for us to understand what it is that we must do in order to show that our life, we don't have to chant our lives matter. We need to demonstrate that our lives matter. And the only way that we can show that our lives matter is by uniting and governing ourselves and doing for self, becoming a nation of people. I remember reading in the final call recently or some months ago that Farrakhan gave a salute to Prophet Noble Drew Ali. And he said the Prophet Noble Drew Ali came and told us that we're not Negroes, we're not color folks, we're not these people. We are a nation. We are Moors. We come from an ancient and divine people. So when we link back up to these ancient and divine people and we understand the mechanisms of the more scientific love of America, then we understand that this is a national divine movement. And within the charter or from the charter of the more scientific love of America, we can form our own municipalities. This is when we start saying that our lives matter. This is when we start demonstrating do for self, because now we will start buying land and start building our own houses and paving our own streets. And then we will start employing our own security force to make sure that we are not being murdered and raped when we walk up and down the street by our own people. Yeah, we understand that all lives matter. Yes, we believe that a little sister who is doing homework in her home and a bullet come in and shoot her in her head is a travesty. And it's, and it's worthy of a march, and it's worthy of a demonstration. And there are brothers and sisters that are doing that. But the mainstream media doesn't show that. The mainstream media doesn't show that a brother that's incarcerated and been incarcerated for over 24 years has his own show and has been doing it since last year, February of last year, and has make it, been making sure that we are getting programs of sustenance that I'm giving back, that I'm digging in my own pockets and making sure that the airtime is paid for so that we can bring these type of programs. So, yes, we understand that our lives matter and all lives matter, but we need to understand that we need to revert back to nationalism. We need to revert back. You have one minute remaining. We need to revert back to being a nation of people. And I challenge everybody to investigate who Noble Gerard Lee was and what he stood for, or not who he was, who he is and what he stands for. Because that's where our salvation is going to lie as a people. Noble Gerard Lee, Marcus Mosell Garvey, and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So with that, I'm going to always end until this time come, 10, 10, 15, justice or else. Peace. Asante Sana, brother. Sutton Bay, and thank you're welcome. You. So, I just want to let you know we have Nandi here from Nandi no Nandi's Knowledge Cafe in Highland Park, and she's here to talk with us about the upcoming screening by Sabir Bay called Out of Darkness, um, which is coming up on October 17th uh, at Nandi's Knowledge Cafe. And then we'll also be joined by uh, very shortly by Brother Sabir Bay. Oh, here he is on line two. Thank you for using Global Telling. Mama Nandi. Oh, thank you, Taryn. And thank is Brother so Sutton Bay still online? No, he has just he has just hung up. Oh, okay, uh, I wanted to say peace to the brother. Yeah, well, he'll, he'll get a chance to call back in uh, mm -hmm. later on in the show. Okay. Uh, so we have, you have an event coming up with Sabir Bay. Um, that's coming up on October 17th? Yes. Okay, so we just wanted to get a chance to talk about that. And do we have Sabir on the line? Peace. Peace, Brother Sabir. Peace, Sabir. How are Peace, you? Everyone. How you doing? Great. Thank you so much for calling in to uh, sit with us today, to sit with us on the phone. That's what's up. What's going <laughs> on? Yes, sir. So um, Nandi is here from Knowledge, Nandi's Knowledge Cafe. Um, Peace, Sister Nandi. Uh, Peace, Brother Sabir, where knowledge is power. Where knowledge is power. <laughs> yeah. So what about this event coming up on the 17th? What is this documentary, Out of Darkness? Uh, are you talking to me or are you talking to Nandi? Yes, sir. Brother Sabir, I'm talking to you. I'm sorry. Well, oh, please, uh, before you, uh, I'm going to say, I, I hear an echo. I don't know what that is. It ain't my phone. Oh, okay, sir. I hear some type of echo in the background. I don't know, because it'll get annoying after a while. Oh, no. You want me to try to hang up and call right back? It, it could be the phone. Um, we're not hearing anything on this end. 
So he said, yeah. just talk. Uh, just continue to talk. Okay. Yes. First and foremost, let me give a shout out to um, Brother R.J. Watkins and Brother Henry Taylor, man, for um, this platform. Yes. Um, and it really need to be supported. You know what I mean? Every time mm -hmm. I'm in Detroit, you know, he always open, you know, with open arms, invite me to the station. You know, so I just first and foremost got to do that. If nobody never did that, that's what you spoke to. Um, because I've seen his brother grow. So yes. I just wanted to start out with that. Um, first of all, the, the documentary, and shout out, did I say shout out to you, Nandi? You know, I don't give a shout out. You and you sit the tea, too. So. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Y'all got to excuse me. I'm just getting actually from Houston. I, I did a TV show in Houston, so I'm literally just getting back okay. and trying to get my stuff together because we have a big lecture tomorrow in Dallas for the Taj and I. So I'm okay. like really Tasha all over. <laughs> yeah, I'm all over the place right now. Um, the documentary Out of Darkness is actually is is three films in one. Actually, the Out of Darkness film is three films. But we just finished up the last chapter. My brother Amadeus Christ is actually the director of the film, and the Out of Darkness is really about solutions. It's not about the problems. We're talking about solutions, and um. He came about this probably a couple months ago, and it's basically it's done. Like I said, you're going to get three for one. And the film is really, again, it's about solutions. We talk about hip-hop in there. We talk about Africa and then We talk about the Moors in there. So we have um, the participants, his brother, Taj Tariq Bey, um, Anthony Browder, Claude Anderson, Joy DeGru, um, uh, uh, with Alantis Browder, Tim Wise, um, who else did I? James Small, Professor Kaba. I mean, we have Umar Johnson. Everybody's in this documentary. So it's like an all-star cast. And um, if they know anything of seeing Hidden Colors, this will blow everything out the water. I'm going to tell you that right now. It it's from the like graphics it. alone. Mm -hmm. How long is the film? The film is three hours. Wow. And, and, and it's not a boring part in there. Anybody can go look at the trailer on YouTube, Out of Darkness, or go to outofdarknessfilm.com. You'll see the trailer. It's 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 from the man, like all the way up to the shooting that just took place. And um, what was it? Then the, the guy went into the church. So mm -hmm. the documentary is is dope. It's like you're really watching a movie. You know what I mean? Right. Out of darkness films dot com. Yeah, man. It, it, it's bananas. Oh, good. So you for a treat. That's awesome. So, how long have you been working on this one? I know this is you've done other documentaries before. Uh, well, this particular one, um, Out of Darkness, it's been probably about six months. I mean, the brother's brilliant who actually put this together. Um, I mean, he's very brilliant. It's about six months, mm -hmm. and it was six, seven months in the making. Mm -hmm. Will you have some films on that day to sell? Well, we yeah, we will. We probably will have some. We just actually, because like I said, it's a lot of stuff you got to cover. You got to deal with the uh, the music that's going to be because everybody like even that movie NWA everybody trying to run around shoot somebody so now it's like you got to make sure the music is covered you got to make sure everybody oh, yeah. you know mm -hmm. it was good with the film and the sign off so it's not just we just do something together and to put out there you know what I mean it's actually you know mm -hmm. we have to get last minute stuff together he just called me yesterday I believe and told me he finished up the last chapter so now we got to straighten out the music you know so I believe by the time we get there um, it should be. We should have some available, but we're starting in Long Beach, California at Shades of Africa. That's the first showing, and then we're doing Pasadena, and mm -hmm. then we hit in Atlanta on um, October the 18th, and then I believe we're coming there in Detroit. Yes. So we should have some. By the time we get there, we should have some. If not, we have other ones. Um, brother James, Professor James Smalls and myself, we I had brought him out to L.A., and the same brother that we did the Out of Darkness film with, he filmed this one, and they're not just shooting – you know, film is actually a lot of places where we were going. We mm -hmm. made it into a, a movie, basically. Okay. Okay. Now, I was under the impression that you had already started doing the screenings of the movie because you've been so busy. So, what what are you doing? <laughs> in what were you doing in Texas? Well, we do a lot of promotion. When, when I'm in certain areas, they call me to ask me to come on shows. Um, uh -huh. And at the same time, I'm promoting the film. So, like again, Todd and I. I'm doing a lecture in Dallas, Texas this weekend at Doc's Bookstore. So, I, you know, I've been here. So I'm going to, waiting for Todd to get here tonight, and we're going to be straight up in Dallas tomorrow. Okay, what are you dealing with with the lecture? Well, the lecture, we're going to be clearing up a lot of stuff pertaining to the Moore as far as with Todd. Um, I'm not going to touch too much on it. I'm really going to go into his, um, probably the hip-hop part and the uh, 
the law aspects of things. And Todd is going to go into the history. It's going to be off the hook. We already got a, I think, a, a, a packed house already. So what I'm really trying to do is even bring the elders everywhere we're going. Mm-hmm. And um, I just, the Atlanta event, I'm going to have Todd come out there and brother James Smalls. If you don't know who Professor James Smalls is, he's actually the voodoo priest. Yeah. And he's been around for years. So um, the sister says, she says, she'll fly us all out there. I didn't have to take care of that. I just called them too. So each place I'm trying to get another elder to come with us to show the connection between the elders and the Pan-Africans and the RBGs that we're one Mm -hmm. family. You know what I mean? So that's what I've been doing. Uh, Sabir, brother Sabir, when you touch on, uh, when you said it's going to be about solutions, the solution to what's going on now, what has brought us here, how we're going to solve these situations that we're in, especially as far as building the black community. Well, yeah, well, first of all, we got to correct that, you know, like the brother said, and I heard him earlier, and shout out to the brother that was in the um, prison. Mm-hmm, yes. We need to change it from saying Black Lives Matter. I right. purposely, years ago, if anybody watched my Severe Bay shows online, I've been saying it, but I've been doing radio for over 13, 14 years, mm-hmm. but I started in L.A., and, and, I, and I would say, combat Black Lives Matter, let me create hashtag Moorish Lives Matter. And mm-hmm. people say, well, we, you know, everybody don't see themselves as Moorish, but it's just to get you to start thinking. You know what I'm saying? A different way, or doing research on who the Moors are. Right. That's the reason why I did that. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, "You don't have to condemn a dirty glass of water just to the clean one up." Mm-hmm. So what I did is set the Moors lives matter and let them know that we're all Moors. It's not something that you join. It's not a club. You know, it's who we are. So once mm-hmm. you start doing your own research and you do diligence, you will find out that they're talking about you. Okay. You see what I'm saying? And that's all I was doing. Okay. This has this, and this is the solutions to the problem. And I hear people talk about the brother. Um, the family didn't want nobody to speak um, on, on them, but I speak for myself. And I said if the brother had his, maybe, maybe, if he had his feds on, he might have thought about it a little different. You see what I'm saying? But everybody don't wear feathers all the time, 24-7. Right. But it's by your character also. Right. And I understand about sometimes brother we've been Mansour living Ball that. Bay. Yes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the brother that was in St. Louis. And sometimes you can get caught up and some things about the people that you're around and your environment, you know what I mean? So this is how they're trying to dirty the brother's name by him, you know, posing with guns. You know, I see Europeans all day long on Facebook posing like six or seven year old with you guns. You got that right, and you the know, children too. You know, so let's be real with it. Mm-hmm. You know, so again, we have to speak up, those that know, you know, we have to speak up on that, not necessarily speaking for the family, but we speaking for the next more, rather they call themselves black or not, they're still more. And that's right. why I said I hashtag the Morris Lives Matter out there, but you won't really hear them talking about that because that will make people start thinking, what is this thing? Let me find out. As a deep researcher, you're going to say, well, let me find out who these Moors are. You see what I'm saying? So, exactly. And that's going to lead you to other things. Exactly. And I know you have done a lot of work in dealing with enlightening people about what, what it is to be a Moor mm-hmm. and what is meant by you know such a mysterious word. Um, I remember in Detroit a few years ago, a few years ago, you did a screening of uh, the Noble Jurali documentary, Noble Jurali, Prophet of the People, and yeah. there was there was big response. And even you know, since then, I run into people all the time who have no idea that there's a documentary um, documenting yeah. Noble Jurali. And I actually have a copy of it. I'm just gonna hold it up. And actually, we 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 made that whole doc that whole documentary and see mm-hmm. the. Actually, that came out the same time that Hidden Colors came out because I was working on that in a mm-hmm. hip-hop documentary. Mm-hmm. But see, the thing is that when you're talking about this information, it depends on who you're trying to bring it to. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's why sometimes I can commend the Hidden Colors because when you're looking at, when you say something that's profit or, or more, they automatically turn on that if it's a religion. You see what exactly. I'm saying? So you're only going to get a certain amount of people. Right. And my thing wasn't to take it to a mainstream of our media. You know, it was just to put it out because no one in history has ever did a documentary on Noble Drale. No one no has way. ever did a documentary on Noble Drale. So I just said, man, I was just doing it for the fun of it, just to put it out, you know. So we were we actually talking in the making of the Moors in America directly after this documentary come out. We're actually in the process of talking about doing it, but we need the finance to make it happen. Mm-hmm. That would okay. be good. We have a caller oh, on yeah, line we'll one. I'm sorry, just a moment. Uh, line one. Yes, it's wrong. It's wrong. A greeting. 
Yes, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Who, who am I speaking with? What's your name? I'm Mrs. Sheikway L. I am a Grand Sheik of the Morris Science Temple of America. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, I was just listening uh, into the show. Um, Islam and peace and greetings to everyone. I wanted to ask Brother Sabir Bay a question, if he doesn't mind. Sure. Yes, I was just wondering um, if you planned on adding any members of the Morris Science Temple of America in any of your future documentaries. You know, being that Prophet Noble Drew Ali is the one that brought the movement to our people. We brought Islam to our people. I think, you know, these two dynamics can't be separated. So I wanted to know if you were, you know, consider or were were you con ever considering adding actual members of the movement that made us all aware that we're more than the first time to any of your future uh, uh, documents. Okay, if, if any, and, and actually that came up also, and this is how we're going to actually, we're still in the making of doing it, and, and if anyone who watched Noble Dwelly documentary, the first one, if you did see it, you can go to my website, SabirBayShow.com. If you look at the first one, we had, um, I think, believe Temple Number, oh man, it's in Philly, my brother Azim Hopkins Bay is in there. Mm -hmm. If you go to that, at that, more, that documentary, you will see the Moors in D.C. from the Moors Science Temple in that documentary. So they already mm -hmm. in there in the first one, mm -hmm. but no one knows about it. They know more about Hidden Colors than they know about Noble Drali documentary. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? They know more about that because the way the brother put the money up. That's right. I keep telling mm -hmm. people, if you're, you have to put money into mm -hmm. what you want. Mm -hmm. And even living in Hollywood right now in L.A., I see that happening. We can be on the sidelines talking all day long, but you have to put money in to put, tell your story. You do. If we're not putting money in, our story is not going to be told that way. And mm -hmm. nobody gave me a dime for doing Noble Drowley documentary. My brother from Turtle Gang, we did this. And if anybody mm -hmm. knows about filming and editing and how much it takes to put these things together, in the same way in um, Out of Darkness, it takes finances to ha make that happen. So we mm -hmm. did do that in the first one. The second one we're talking about, okay, we want indigenous people who call themselves Indians. We want somebody from the Moore Science Temple side. We want somebody that's not inside the Moore Science Temple. We want somebody from the Nation of Islam. You see what I'm saying? So we want to touch all aspects of this, not just one mm -hmm. perspective of it. Definitely. Definitely. You know? Definitely. And that's how we got to do it. No, no, and that, 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 and it is, it's good to hear that the Mortar Science Temple of America is being considered. I actually watched the old documentary some years back. Uh, one of the things, like PBS and the History Channel, if you put together a documentary, one of the things that you can do is submit the documentary to them. Mm -hmm. And they, if, if they approve it, they'll air it. And you can then sell the DVDs for, you know, whatever price you set on the DVDs. They actually will do a promo after the show is over. I think that would be a good way to get the story of Prophet Lady Ali. Out there to the oh people. yeah, that's, oh no, it's definitely that's you know, that's definitely one of the things. I mean, brother, I'm 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 way like way ahead of that one, but I understand it, and I, like I said, I'm very aware of all of that. But again, it's getting the money together to record these things the right way, because it's not just you just recording. You have to have stuff formatted. Things have to be set right. It has to be, you know, as far absolutely. as timelines and time frames. That's and right. I'm like, it's a lot that's of work right. in it, and and that's why I tell people, it's not that you just throw together and you put out. Like when people see this documentary, and again, you can go to um, outofdarknessfilm.com, you will actually see the format, the camera, how it was set. Um, we just shot an actuality show that I'm doing right now, which is going to be a DVD, but Africa Van Vada and Ice-T and us. We have to format things for TV for you because they're not going to do it. You have to do it. So now you even have That's to get it. someone to pay to do that. Or you know, I mean, even at this station, you know, where they're at now, you have to format it. And it's not, you know, sometimes it's not free. And I'm going to tell you that it's really not because they're going to say, yo, what am I getting out of this? And I tell more is the same mm -hmm. thing. What am I getting mm -hmm. out of it? You know what I mean? What are you, what, what are you, what are we getting out of this by doing this? They want to know this. Yeah. This is what even some of the people tell me in my travel. You know, what am I getting out of if I do this? And people don't understand that side of it. So mm -hmm. when it's, it's always something they want from you. So again, yeah. if we're not putting our own money in, it's not going to come out the way we want it. You see what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. not. You what know, they ain't going to say, oh, because you, you're more, I'm going to let that go. No, dude. You mm -hmm. know, that they're not going to let it ride like that.
Exactly. So thank you so much, Asante Sana, Sheikh Whale, for calling in. I want you to stay with yes, us, and it looks like we definitely have here an, an, a great opportunity for collaboration um, for this project and for projects moving forward, so that we can begin to come together and well continue to come together and to, to yes, put our energy yes, and resources into these projects that we all support and need. Yeah, this is excellent, and I believe we have a caller on line three. Uh, just a moment. You did. But while she's doing that, uh, listening at both of you brothers talk, maybe there's some uh, Ujima collective work and responsibility that you all need to put into this project. Because as uh, the brother Bell suggested, uh, to get this on uh, the, Af um, the History Network channel, it, it does take it does take money to build anything. It's easy oh, for people oh. to say, you know, we could do this, we could do that. <laughs> I hear it all the time. I hear it all the time. All the time. All, listen, Black folks got so many ideas. It's unbelievable. And, 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 and what you see what happens, I was told that people will pat you on your back, right? Mm -hmm. They will pat you on your back and say, yo, that was a good job. But when you ask yeah. them for the money, they Gee. disappear. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So... <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. I heard that so much, and 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 just being in this business, understanding how things go. Yes, it's like, yo, just put your money where your mouth is. Then yes. we can rap. I don't, me personally, I don't own no anybody, anything to join anything. I'm, no. I already put the work in. Yes. I'm just saying, look, I need y'all financially because there's many times that, and I don't know if I told you this, Nadi, I'm living in L.A. There's yes. many times they offered me positions that I've turned down mm -hmm. to say, look, I'm not going to talk about this. You know what I mean? Because sell I'm your soul to the devil over here you see what i'm saying <laughs> yes so people don't know what you gotta what you go through dealing with this, even with people in the hip-hop industry the movie industry yes they're not going to give up their millions for just to say this you right. see what i'm saying right they're not going to do that mm -hmm. you know yeah and that's i'm just keeping it real with you i'm right. just telling you the industry side of this well so I, we're talking about i'm i'm really looking forward to uh you coming to nani's knowledge cafe to show this film because I have yeah. some new space to offer you. I mean, um, 